everyone, it's Lindsay. Welcome back to another video. Today I want to share with you how to use your hot foil gel and flocking sheets. So for this technique, I am going to be using a stencil, some white cardstock hot foil gel, which I have used in a number of tutorials, which I will leave some link down below, and some flocking sheets. Now the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and start up my laminator and get it warming up. I have mine set to the hottest setting. You really want to let this heat up for a good 20 minutes at least. So what I like to do is go ahead and start up my laminator and let that heat up while I'm putting on the gel and letting it dry. So I went ahead and started that and set it aside while it heats up and now I'm going to go ahead and position my stencil. So what I like to do is go ahead and line up my stencil on the front of my card and then I'll just put a piece of painter's tape. This is a low tack painter's tape and then flip it over. It'll be held in place by that front piece, put some tape on the back and then I can flip it back over and remove the tape on the front. That way I know I have it positioned just so and nothing's going to move around on me and the paper and the stencil will stay together. Then it's time to smooth through the hot foil gel. I am using a palette knife for this. You can use an old credit card, you can use a paint scraper, whatever you have on hand just to get this through in a nice, even, thin layer. You don't need a ton of this, just enough to push through the stencil. The main objective here is just to get it as even, as smooth as possible. You don't want any huge lumps or really, really thin areas. You know, just kind of keep it as smooth and even as you can. Now, as I'm putting this through, I want to talk about stencil placement. So once you get this gel on, you are going to need an area to kind of handle your paper so you don't disturb your gel as you set it aside to dry um, and as you take your stencil off. Because once this gel is on, you're going to need to remove that stencil and you're going to need to wash it as soon as possible and clean up your surface or that gel will dry and you won't get it off. So make sure as you're positioning your stencil, you give yourself a little corner where no gel is going to be so you have that little corner to hang on to. Then set it aside to dry. The great thing about this gel is it's going to go on white and you'll know when it's dry because it will be completely clear. Then it's time to go ahead and add our flock. Now I'm using the flock transfer sheets. They come in quite a few colors now, but I am going in with this really bright purple. Now, unlike foil, this has a definite texture to it. It's almost a velvety texture. It's so fun. So what you wanna do now is go ahead and align your piece of flock with your panel with the gel on it. Now with foil, you want your shiny side or pretty side facing up, but you wanna do the opposite with your flock sheets. You wanna put the flock next to the gel. That gel acts like a glue and it's gonna grab onto that flock, so you wanna make sure that you have those two pressing against each other and that you have all of the gel completely covered. Then put it in your carrier sheet. Now I am using a piece of parchment paper. You can use any kind of carrier sheet. You can use a piece of computer paper folded in half. That will work just as well. Then we've had our laminator heating up for about probably 30, 45 minutes now. So it is really good and hot. I'm gonna send this through once and then I'll just wait for it to completely go through my machine. This takes a little bit. Um, I like to put my hands at the back of my laminator to make sure that it's coming out and it's not getting stuck. As soon as I feel that coming out, I know it's going to go. If it doesn't and I feel it getting stuck, I shut my laminator off and I'll pull it out. The only time I've had it get stuck is when I go without the fold first. So whenever I put my two pieces of parchment aligned at the very end of it, if that makes sense. So you want to go fold first. Then once it's gone through once, I'm going to go ahead and flip this 180 degrees and send it through again. I like to send my flocking sheets through twice to make sure they really get a lot of heat and a lot of pressure. Then I'll pull it out of my machine, pull it out of the carrier sheet and just let it cool down for a second. Then it's going to be time to go ahead and remove that flock sheet. Now, as you do this, you're going to get a little bit of resistance and it's going to feel like you're tearing it apart. Just pull it. It's okay. That flock is just kind of hanging onto that sheet a little bit. 
the flock will still stay behind on your paper just give it a little tug and it will start to release and once you have that all off you have this gorgeous flocked panel I love the definition to this I was really surprised at how much definition I could actually get with the flocking sheets and the texture is just gorgeous on this as well it has a really nice soft velvety feel to it so to finish this off I am just using a sentiment that I created with an alphabet die set so I die cut three of each letter H E and Y and then an exclamation point as well I will leave the die set I use linked down below it's one of my favorites that I use quite often to create my own sentiments and I have a really fun video on how to use this die set and your hot foil gel to create kind of um, a brushed look with your foiling I will leave that video linked down below too it's a fun one now once I have that all lined up I like to use my t-square ruler here so I guess I should say I took each one of those letters I die cut three of them and built them up one on top of the other so they have some thickness to them I don't like to go in with little bits of foam tape to add dimension I just like to cut a bunch of letters and layer them up with glue one on top of the other then I'll use my t-square ruler to line everything up and then once I have it positioned where I want it I'll go ahead and use my tweezers and some liquid glue and start gluing these down I'll leave that t-square ruler in place and that is going to be my guide to make sure these are all nice and even I start on the outside edges with my letters so here I'm starting with the H and I'm gonna add quite a bit of glue here just because that background does have some texture to it and you do want these to stick really well then I'll use my tweezers to put this back into place and just give it a good press with my fingers once this is all set I will put an acrylic block on top of this to dry for a few minutes and that's going to give it some good pressure now I'll leave my E and my Y for now and I'm going to go to the other side to my last letter or my exclamation point in, in this card and go ahead and glue that down because I want my first and my last uh, letters or in this case punctuation to be evenly spaced on either side of the card so I'll go ahead and put that top of the exclamation point and then go ahead and do my little um, dot at the bottom and then once I have those down in place I can go ahead and work on my E and my Y to get those down and centered in between those two that's a really easy way to get these letter sentiments that you build up yourself evenly spaced also there are a lot of companies that do have dies that cut individual letters for a sentiment one way to get those all lined up is just to use your die cut outline and put that down but in this case I don't have that so I'm just using my two square ruler and my eyeballs now a few things I want to mention about this technique make sure that you do get your gel down in a nice even and smooth layer it's not going to work as well the flocking sheets if it's not smooth you'll have some skipping you'll have some gaps another fun way to use this is to do some tone on tone backgrounds with your stencils so for this I could have used purple cardstock and then put on that purple flock and it would have been a tone on tone but with added texture on the stencil part which is a really neat look I really like to use the black along with black cardstock for quick and easy sympathy cards it works out really really well now once I have those all in place I put an acrylic block block on top of those set them aside to dry and then all I did was cut about an eighth of an inch off the top and the bottom of this panel and then mounted it on to an A2 side folding card base that I'm using horizontally but that's it that's the card this was a fun one and an easy one to make just make sure that whenever you do cards like this you account for that dry time with the gel if you do a nice thin layer it only takes about 20 to 25 minutes for it to completely dry that is going to do it for me today all the links of the supplies are I used are listed down in the description box below don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already thanks for watching everyone and happy crafting